Greetings YouTube, Simon here and welcome back to the channel. Now I'm currently streaming through Final Fantasy 7, that's the original Final Fantasy 7, at least the PS4 version of the original game, not the remake which isn't out until next year of course. But one of the feats we recently accomplished was achieving uh, the Omni Slash which is the best limit break in the game, well arguably anyway, uh, and yet doing so on disc 1. Now this is something that a lot of people uh, do not think is worth doing, in fact I I myself have never accomplished this before. I've always saved Omni Slash until disc 2 or disc 3. But I've got to be honest with you, despite the fact that it's a little bit more time consuming achieving the Omni Slash on disc 1, it's actually a lot less time consuming than I initially expected it was going to be. And now that I've got the method down of how to get it on disc 1, I actually think it's worth it. And I do believe that on every subsequent playthrough I complete a Final Fantasy 7 going forwards, I will be doing the same again and getting Omni Slash on the first disc because you just have it for so much longer and as I say it's not even that much out of the way. So I'm going to explain to you today how I got this. Uh, I did have to do some trial and error but because I've done that you won't have to and I'm going to explain the best way for you to get this yourself. So the way that you achieve Omni Slash is by earning battle points at the battle square over at the Gold Saucer. Now, here's the first thing that's going to put a few people off. If you're doing this on disc 2 or disc 3, you are required to earn 32,000 battle points in order to purchase the Omni Slash limit break. However, if you want to do this on disc 1, then that same item actually costs 51,000 battle points. And even though that sounds like quite a substantial extra, it actually only works out to one or two more, uh, you know, rides through the battle square itself. So it's not really that much more time consuming. Now, what people are going to consider to be the biggest time sink in attaining Omni Slash in Disc 1 is trying to earn enough GP, that's different to the battle points we need, but enough GP to actually afford the entry fee into the battle arena battles. So every time you want to go through the battle arena, you have to pay 10 uh, GP and that's how you're going to then earn your subsequent BP. Now just a warning, once you've started earning battle points you cannot leave the battle arena because that will reset your total battle points down to zero. So you need to make sure that you're entering the battle arena with enough GP from the get go. So how much GP do you need and how do you earn that on disc 1? Okay, so I recommend going with at least 200 GP. That's probably going to be more than you need, but at least you're covering it a little bit safely as well. Now, there are multiple ways spoken about on the internet of attaining GP on disc 1. And some of those include the boxing minigame over at Wonder Square, because if you can win that, I think you get something ridiculous like 300 GP. I could never get that to work for me. I don't know whether it was bugged or whether I just had bad luck. It's purely luck based incidentally. There's no tricks with the RNG that I know of to get uh, wins in that guaranteed. Unfortunately, I could just not attain much GP from that method. The other method that's spoken of is using G-Bike. If you can get, I think it's 10,000 points, then you will get a 10 GP prize, which you can repeat multiple times. The problem is 10 GP is a very small amount for going through the entire G-Bike course each time. And in my opinion, it's just not worth doing that when there's a more effective method available. And that more effective method is the chocobo betting. Now chocobo betting, the downside to this is it is slightly complicated and trying to maximise your efforts there is going to take a little bit of work and a little bit of practice. But once you've got the hang of it, you'll be whizzing through the chocobo bets and probably winning about 60 to 70% of the time. And you can get up to 300 GP per win, depending on how lucky you are with the item rewards. But even if you don't get 300 GP, you're still going to rack up your GP very quickly by getting subsequent wins. So I'm not going to go through chocobo betting here and now because I've just done a video on it, um, a standalone video on doing chocobo betting and maximising your success chances with that. In a brief nutshell though, the chocobo colour itself doesn't matter when determining bets, however jockey colour does seem to do so, so make sure you completely ignore the brown jockeys, even if they have high stats, and then for the other jockeys, go for the speed status of priority above stamina, and where possible go for the grey jockeys, which are the platinum ones. But as I say, I've done an episode covering all of that in detail, with more detail than that, so make sure you check that out, I'll leave a link to it, but... As I say, in about an hour of doing chocobo betting, maybe an hour and a half, I attained over a thousand GP. 
far more than we needed. So in about 10-15 minutes, you can amass as much GP as is going to be needed for getting the Omni Slash. So that kind of concept that the time sink is too much, in my opinion, just isn't true at all. Oh, as an incidental side note, a few of you might be thinking, why not just purchase the GP from the NPC that can sometimes appear outside the entrance to the Gold Saucer? Well, that's because he doesn't appear, unfortunately, until Disc 2. Although a lot of people don't know about that because a lot of people aren't concerned with GP until that part of the game. Whereas that's obviously not the case for us right now. Okay, so we've got our GP, probably from Chocobo betting. It's the best way. Let's go ahead and take it to the Battle Arena and start setting up a character for successful wins here. Now, the Battle Arena then is a solo experience. However, you're not limited to only taking Cloud. You can actually select any of your active party members to participate in the battles. But for me personally, I'm going to recommend Cloud because he's probably going to be your highest level party member simply because, you know, of the virtue of the fact that he's been in the party the entire time, whereas you've probably been swapping and changing between the other members. However, if you've leveled up Ares, then she too is a good choice due to her helpful limit breaks. They can actually keep her alive quite substantially as well so just bear that in mind but overall I'm going to recommend Cloud. Now unless you've been doing a fair bit of grinding throughout disc 1 then Cloud is probably not going to be level 47 for you as he is for me. I do recommend maybe trying to get him to at least level 40 the higher the better of course but for me level 47 pretty much made these battles a breeze. Now, in terms of equipment, this is going to depend on whether or not you've been to the Temple of the Ancients. I have not, because I would love to take Omni Slash into that place and decimate Demon's Gate for lovely justice and revenge after the amount of times he's decimated me in the past. So, because I haven't gone to Temple of the Ancients, I don't yet have access to the Ribbon Accessory. And the Ribbon is a very powerful accessory, which negates all negative status ailments, and there's a lot of those in the Battle Arena. So, if you want to wake us left to the Temple of the Ancients, make sure you get the Ribbon in that place, and then this uh, Battle Arena is going to just be so much easier. However, I don't have that, so a good substitute is the White Cape accessory. And that's because White Cape guards against Frog and Small or Mini, which are some very common negative status effects you're going to be encountering here. So, if you don't have Ribbon, equip White Cape. If you do have Ribbon, equip Ribbon. Now, in terms of weapon and armour, I'm just going to recommend a good combination of strong power along with a whole bunch of materia slots. So, for me, um, the Adam and Bangle is a good choice. Unfortunately, it doesn't have many materia slots and the magic defense is a little low. Incidentally, if you're playing the PS4 version, the magic defense is not bugged. If you're playing the original version of Final Fantasy VII, it is. Uh, as opposed to, uh, or rather as well as that, the weapon that I'm going to be using is going to be the Rune Blade because the Yoshiyuki is great in terms of its power, but not so great in terms of its Materia slots. It's only got two. And Materia is important. So what I'm going to recommend is having a good balance between green, yellow, red, etc. Materias because you are going to probably be disabling some throughout the various encounters and we'll talk about why that is in a moment. So for green materia, um, I do recommend going for restore. And if you haven't already, it is worth leveling restore up in order to attain regen. You don't need cure three, but regen is going to come in invaluably during these encounters. A good enemy skill materia with enemy skills such as Aqualung, uh, Beta, Trine, Big Guard, White Wind, and even Magic Hammer are going to be useful. And I've done videos on how to attain all of those if you don't yet have them. And in terms of red materia, you probably just need one, maybe two, uh, just in case green or yellow get disabled. So you still want to be able to output some magic damage and just stick some powerful summons into those slots. Uh, and then for purple, I do recommend just throwing in some HP plus materias. And if possible, a long range materia as well, if you've got the space for it. Counter attack is fantastic. I use this a lot during my battles here. And because my counter attack is level 3, I think it had a 60% activation chance, which meant that a lot of my damage actually came from the counter attack materia. And finally, I've gone ahead and equipped the added effect poison combination in my arm slot here. This will mean that poison will have no effect on us whatsoever, which is actually very useful. Alternatively, you can also equip Odin with added effect to guard against death, though that's a little bit more rare, so I just took the chances on that. 
Unfortunately, we're only going to have one added effect by this point, unless you've been mad somehow and actually leveled up the added effects material and got a new one. Uh, but even then, you're probably not going to want to sacrifice more material slots. So that's pretty much my setup. It's fairly self-explanatory, I hope. A good balance of materials there from different colours, different schools. So now we're just going to start farming the BP itself. Now, the actual concept of the battle arena is fairly simple. You simply hand over 10 GP to the receptionist and she'll enter you into the battle arena of which eight battles will commence. And if you succeed and beat all eight of them, then you'll be rewarded with uh, a bunch of battle points. And you can keep saving these battle points throughout subsequent battles in order to go ahead and purchase prizes. Now, as always, life isn't always as simple as it sounds. And there is a complication. The complication here is that after each of those eight battles, you're going to have a role at the reels. And for the majority of the time, those reels are going to handicap your um, uh, your character, your party member, whoever's playing. And those handicaps can include things like breaking uh, all material from a certain school, such as all yellow material, or green material, or purple, or red materials, or blue even. Hence the reason I suggested making sure you have a nice variety of materials. Or they can break your accessories, your weapon, or they can halve your HP, re uh, reduce your levels. Just basically all manner of nasty stuff. On top of that, they can also cast negative status effects such as Toad or Mini or Poison. But we should be guarding against all of them. Okay then, so here's the trick. Because the amount of battle points you get at the end depends on how many debilitating reels you selected during the course of the encounters. However, you don't want to debilitate yourself to the point where you can't actually succeed. So what I recommend is trying to pick the least debilitating reels throughout the course of the first seven battles. And then before the final battle, make sure you have a limit break filled and ready to go. Uh, and then for the final reel, select either all materia broken or the green magic materia broken hopefully one of those will be given to you as an option and the reason for that is by selecting either of those you're pretty much guaranteed to be rewarded with about 10,000 battle points once you actually succeed at the final battle and hopefully you've built your limit break up so you can go ahead and finish that final fight without any materia required it's a good strategy it worked well for me and uh, hopefully it will work well for you also. And as a little tip for you, you can actually slow down the reels by constantly tapping square on the controller. And the reason for that is the reels actually pause when you hide them and you can hide them by holding square down. So by tapping square quickly in succession, you are effectively slowing the reels down, allowing you to select the, um, you know, the, the thing that you want on each reel a little bit more accurately. Now you're not gonna do it perfectly every time, but it's something that you'll practice at, and as you start going through the battles, you'll get better at it. So, there's a number of different encounters you're going to face off against, and it's random which ones you're going to get. Uh, the bird here, which is the final boss encounter, or the final encounter I've got, the zoo, uh, is fairly simple, probably the easiest of the bunch. There's not really a whole lot to say about it. A few physical attacks will take care of it. And that's pretty much it. Look at that, we've got 12,000 battle points. And that was in virtue of the fact that we got all materia broken on the reel, selected twice, in fact. So, in total, I've got 24,000 after about two or three attempts. I think about three attempts now. So, we need to, you know, go through a few more times uh, in order to save up enough for the Omni Slash. But one uh, enemy I want to mention is the... Ying Yang enemy. It's a final encounter, so I got the zoo that time, but the Ying Yang is one that you can get. And there's a little trick to this because if you're not careful, it's going to one-shot you with its suicide move. Now, I have seen strategies from people on the internet suggesting that it's susceptible to level 4 suicide, which it is, the enemy skill. And level 4 suicide will do a lot of damage to it. But the problem is when Yang gets to below 1 8th of its maximum health, it's going to unleash its own suicide move, which I guarantee is going to kill you. It's a bad idea. So, the best tip courtesy of Red Mario, is to go ahead and actually just wait until your limit gauge is filled and then unleash it with something powerful like Meteorain, hopefully one-shotting it, not giving it the opportunity to go ahead and unleash its own suicide attack. So just chill out for the first part of the battle while it builds up your limit gauge if it's not filled already when you enter the final battle and then go ahead and unleash something like Meteor Rain. Meteor Rain is the best actually. Once Yang has been defeated, then Ying is fairly simple and he doesn't have a suicide attack so you can go ahead and do whatever you want to defeat him normally. 
And then the other final boss you may encounter is the Green Dragon, which does have a lot of health and does have some mean attacks, but it's actually really simple. For this one, you can cast level 4 Suicide, that will deplete most of its health, and then you can just finish off with a physical attack, and that'll be the end of that. And there we have it, it looks like I've got all the battle points required, so it took me less than an hour of battle arena farming in order to get the 51,000 points that we need for Omni Slash. So it's a lot less than you might think. As long as you've got the correct setup and hopefully Cloud's got a few levels uh, under his belt, then it will not take you as long as perhaps most people would think it would take. So let's go ahead and purchase it. We've earned it, 51,200 points in total. And then once it's ours, all we need to do is head over to the menu and learn it. Just make sure that you've learned Cloud's other limit breaks first, because if he doesn't have his level 3 limit breaks, he won't be able to learn his level 4. And there, and if you're playing on PS4 or Steam, then you'll get the trophy as well. Very nice indeed. Looks like I've got the great gospel to learn for Aerith also while we're here. There we have it then folks, Disc 1 Omni Slash. Now, seeing as how I had plenty of GP, as I said, I carried on farming for the rest of the live stream and got a whole bunch of other items as well. The uh, Championships Belt, uh, the Preemptive Materials, the Speed Plus Materials, uh, amongst a few other things. And the whole stream was an hour and 40 minutes, and in that time, we got everything from the battle arena absolutely everything so like i say not too bad at all all right then guys well i hope the videos helped you please do share in the comment section if you manage to get a disc one omni slash i'll be very interested in hearing how many people actually go through with this but i'll certainly be doing it as well in future playthroughs it's definitely something i've enjoyed doing i think it's worth it i'm looking forward to unleashing omni slash amongst a whole bunch of enemies that have never tasted it before and i'll see you next time for more final fantasy 7 goodbye <laughs>